Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at liver lobules and focus on what we call the portal triad. So, what we have is when it comes to the blood supply that goes to the liver, we already know that we've got, for example, the hepatic artery coming in. So let's write that down, hepatic artery, bringing oxygenated blood to the liver. And we've also got the portal vein coming in, which is bringing all these nutrients that are draining from the digestive viscera. So this includes coming from the colon, coming from the small intestines, coming from the pancreas, for example, coming from the stomach. We've got all these various vessels draining into the portal vein, going to the liver. So unlike other structures, the liver has both the hepatic artery and portal veins entering it. Now, when we look at the amount of blood flow, around about 70% of this blood is coming from the portal vein, and that increases to about 90% after a meal because obviously nutrient-rich blood needs to get to the liver for processing, which we're gonna talk about in a second. The other thing we need to talk about is the fact that the liver, like every other structure, has venous vessels coming out, and this is what we call the hepatic vein, and the hepatic vein ends up becoming the inferior vena cava, which obviously goes Back to the heart. All right, question is, what happens to these two vessels when they enter the liver? Well, the liver is comprised of what we call lobules, and there's between 50,000 to 100,000 lobules in the liver. Now, the lobules are the functional units, and they're hexagonal in shape. So, what does that mean? One, two, three, four, five, six sides. So, you've got all these hexagonal shaped lobules throughout the liver, like I said, 50,000 to 100,000 of them, and they do all the work. So, what we find is that, for example, the portal vein will come in, and branches of the portal vein will go to every single corner of each of these liver lobules. So you're gonna have a dedicated branch of the hepatic, of the portal vein, I should say, sorry, going to every one of these liver lobules and so forth. And the same actually happens with the hepatic artery. You're gonna have a branch of the hepatic artery at every corner of these liver lobules as well. So all these branches coming through. All right. Now, interestingly, right in the middle of these lobules is a central vein, and this is where both the hepatic artery and the portal vein drain into. Now, it's gonna be very difficult looking at it here, so I'm gonna draw this up. Draw a big hepatic lobule, and let's see what happens. So, we know that we have at every corner a big portal vein branch, and we've got one of the hepatic arteries branched at every corner. All right, next thing is, both of these two vessels, the blood comes together. Remember, what's in each blood? For the portal vein, high in nutrients. For the hepatic artery, high in oxygen. Then what happens is this. They both drain together. And this happens at every corner. Every corner. And what you end up getting, I missed the one down the bottom. It's all right, I'll draw that up now. And what we get is what we call the central vein. Now this central vein, we'll talk about it in a sec, but it drains and comes together and all of these central veins come together and merge into the hepatic vein. And then that goes to the inferior vena cava. All right, so what happens is this. You're gonna have the blood high nutrients draining into this area here. Now this area is called the sinusoid. The sinusoid. And the sinusoid's important because this is where this blood is mixing. 
And what you're going to find, lining, now let's just focus on this one for example. Lining the sinusoid, you have endothelial cells. Endothelial cells. Just like the types of cells you find lining blood vessels, capillary beds for example. But the liver's a little bit different. Because even though it capillaries, the endothelia are porous, so there's holes, then those holes usually aren't big enough to let things like proteins out. But at the liver, they are. So there's big gaps at these sinusoids, and they're big enough to let through a whole bunch of substances. Not big enough to let white and red blood cells out, but they are big enough to let proteins out. And this is important because this blood that's now mixing here will also be leaving the sinusoids. Now, when they leave the sinusoids, there's another cell type that we need to talk about, which is sitting here, and they're these plate-like cells. And they're gonna be on either side. And you're gonna find them, I'm gonna draw it up here as well, because this is important to show. And here. Now, these are the hepatocytes. These are the cells that do most of the work in the liver. So what's happening is that the hepatic artery and the portal vein drain into the sinusoids. They're very porous. The fluid leaks out that contains all the, remember, it's gonna contain nutrients. It's gonna contain even some bacteria coming from the digestive viscera. It's gonna contain a whole bunch of substances. Now, as it comes through and drains through these porous little holes, first thing is the endothelia are dispersed between them they have these little cells called Kupfer cells. So these are Kupfer cells. I probably spelled that wrong, but the Kupfer cells are basically macrophages. And so what they do is any invading pathogens that shouldn't drain into, the, into this space here, which I'll talk about in a sec, they gobble up and get rid of. Now, this space between the endothelia, the endothelial cells, and the hepatocytes, this space in between is called the space of Disse, the space of Disse, okay? Now you've got this fluid with substances draining to the space of Disse, and this is what happens. This fluid then gets taken up by the hepatocytes. Now, it's nutrient rich, so it's gonna contain carbohydrates, it's gonna contain proteins, it's gonna contain a little bit of fat. And what it's gonna do is it takes it up, and the hepatocytes store around about half to two thirds of these nutrients. Now, what they also do is they play a role in detoxification of substances and hepatocytes also produce things. They also produce proteins like albumin, for example, which means if they're producing things, they're releasing things and they release things into the space of Dissy. So it goes in both directions. And what happens with the albumin, for example, is it's going to move back into the sinusoid and then drain into the central vein. Okay, so you've got oxygen, you've got nutrients coming through the sinusoids, moving through the porous gaps of the endothelia. Hopefully the Kupfer cells, they take the macrophages, they ingest any pathogens that shouldn't move through. It goes into the space of Dissy and then the hepatocytes take it up and decide what they want to do with it. They'll store stuff or they'll produce stuff themselves and go in the opposite direction. Anything that's left is gonna drain into the central vein. However, some things that move into this space of Dissy don't go in either direction, and what they do is they drain in this direction. And this becomes lymphatics. This becomes lymph. And this lymph obviously forms a lymphatic vessel. So you've got three vessels here at the moment. There's one more vessel. I know it's called the portal triad three, but there's actually one more we need to talk about. We haven't spoken about what these hepatocytes do in the space between the hepatocytes. What they end up doing is they can produce something called bile. 
Now bile, I've done a video on it, is a collection of cholesterol, electrolytes, water for example, and then this bile will drain in this direction into bile ducts. And so what we end up having is these bile ducts form another vessel. So you've actually got four vessels here, and the vessels, you've got two going in that direction, that's gonna be the hepatic artery and the portal vein, two going in that direction, that's lymphatics and bile, and it's called the triad because they don't usually include the lymphatic vessels associated with it. And so this is what's actually happening at this space. Anything that drains into the central vein, like I said before, culminates together with other veins, and that turns into the hepatic vein, and then goes into the inferior vena cava. So what we've got here is an introduction to the hepatic lobules and also the portal triad.